I have had women ask me about, you know, like, is hormonal birth control, like, is this the same as as hormone therapy? Mm-hmm. And the answer to that is that it's not. And the, the things that are different is that when you're doing hormone therapy, is that the hormones that are that you're using are are biologically identical, mm-hmm. meaning that they have good binding affinity and specificity ah, to the hormone receptor. And this it. is true for the ethanol or for the ethanol estradiol, so the estradiol that you use. And also instead of a progestin, you can you use actually micronized progesterone. And um in and hormone this is a, replacement. Yes, in hormone yeah. replacement. And this is an important distinction because for women who are going through the menopausal transition, and if you're depriving them of, you know, allopregnanolone, that really nice neurosteroid that you get when your body's mm-hmm. breaking down progesterone, yeah. I mean, it's just not, you're not getting all of the benefits of, of hormones. You know, it's like you're getting all yep. the costs of having low levels of hormones and you're getting none of the benefits. And so right. sometimes women's doctors will be like, let's just keep you on hormonal birth control this, you know, this whole time. And, and to that, I say, I don't think so. Like, yeah. like I would just try to go off of that, get as many benefits of, as you can from your natural cycles while you're having them. And then during that time, you can make a decision about whether or not then you want to kind of like supplement your right. hormonal changes after a period of time. Once you've got a handle on your cycles, yeah. supplement that with the use of, you know, synthetic estrogen or a micronized progesterone. Um, because both of those things can be helpful to women as they're going right. through the hormonal transition. And especially if they're working with a thoughtful provider who's willing to, you know, allow them to do things like, for example, mm-hmm. take micronized progesterone during the luteal phase of the cycle, just, you know, during the last two weeks to help supplement the fact that many women get progesterone deficient in the menopausal transition where they're having all that gnarliness that you get from <laughs> from unopposed estrogen, which, you know, you'd think would be a lot of unopposed, fun. Unopposed you know, estrogen. <laughs> you know, I you, like the way it's, you said that. Go yeah, ahead. Keep going. Yeah, but I mean, you know, you'd think that'd be a lot of fun where you have this like cycle where it's just like estrogen and then like no progesterone. Oh, <laughs> but it doesn't feel that way. It doesn't feel no. that way at all. It's like women feel no, on edge like, and they feel, you know, like, like just like totally yeah. overwhelmed and, and crabby. We may, do, we may just keep talking and never stop talking. Too. Yeah. Like I could just, yeah, <laughs> progesterone chills us out. So that's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, totally. And so, so, you know, using micronized progesterone as part of hormone therapy is a totally different animal than using hormonal birth control, which contains these progestins. Yeah. And so the, the 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 hormonal sort of the traditional hormone replacement therapy is is a lot more um in tune with what actually goes on yeah. biologically in women's bodies. So if so if you're listening to this and and you're 50 and your doctor said stay on birth con- the birth control pill, you're what I'm hearing from this is let's have a different conversation with your doctor or get a different doctor who can move you over to a different uh, to a, a hormone replacement or bioidentical so that you get actually something that's more age appropriate. Well, right, exactly. And also, you know, I would s- suggest that rather than jumping from one thing to the other, right, that you take a couple of cycles and yeah. figure out where you're at, because yeah. a lot of women don't even know, you know, it's like they've been yeah. on it forever. And then they're like, I have no idea if I'm yeah. menopausal or that, not. And that was our biggest surprise when Fast Like a Girl went out into the world was how many women didn't know where their cycle was. A lot of them were 20 and 30. You know, we've seen with fasting and fasting for your cycle and and with menopausal women, I have them fast according to the moon cycle so that they have some kind of rhythm that they can work with. I love that. And it sh- it sh- it's really when you dive into it, you start to see how connected we are to water, the moon, all of it. It makes so much sense. But on yeah. the surface, it sounds very, very witchy. But it's really quite remarkable. And what I see with these women is when they come back to some kind of cycle, whether they're 60 or 70, oftentimes they'll have one or two days of a period. And I will get like a, an email or in when I was in my clinic, they would come in and they'd be like, oh, my God, I'm 60 and my breasts are tender. And, and then the next week they'd be like, I actually bled for a day. And all of that. And they hadn't uh, they hadn't had a period in a decade. Right. And I, my belief in that was we were just bringing a lifestyle and giving them the rhythm that the female body was supposed to have. And and that's what Fast Like a Girl did. I love it. I love it. It's like it, uh, that's you know, that's so amazing. That's so amazing. Yeah. And then but then, it all you know, I would always be like, well, I don't know. I actually am thinking now that 
Is there any risk if you've been on birth con- the birth control pill for decades, mm-hmm. then you go into your perimenopause or postmenopausal years and you're trying to reestablish a rhythm? Mm-hmm. I mean, you, even if you don't have a very consistent cycle or you have no cycle, you may have some eggs in there that haven't been used and you could be a little surprised. Right. I would be. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, I would get some hormone tests done just to like see kind of see where you're at, because if there's any chance of pregnancy, then at least yeah. while you're figuring things out, use some condoms. Yeah. Just to right. make sure. Yes. God help us. Yeah. You know, I, I learned something the other day. I was like talking to somebody and this was just in the context of women's reproductive rights and kind of how hard things have gotten. And, you know, and there's this like misunderstanding out there that the, you know, that uh, abortion rights, for example, are, are things, you know, that are it's because all these young girls are doing all of, you know, using these, it as birth control. Yeah. 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 And it's like the number so one the age group of yeah. women who who terminate pregnancies are women in their 40s. Wow. Mm-hmm. Do you know? So whenever we did a ton of detox in my clinic mm-hmm. and then I did nutrition and fasting and all of it was mapped to hormones. And the first thing I would say to every single woman didn't matter their age. But the older they are, were, the more that shocked they look is I would say, be careful, you can get pregnant because we're about to clean your whole system up. Yeah. And, and you know, we had a few oops and we had a few surprises that were actually wonderful surprises. But uh, it's a real it's really interesting. 